Hi, I'm Alex and welcome to Super Make Something. Today, we're building a giant NeoPixel LED mirror using 3D printing, laser cutting, and a Raspberry Pi. Let's get started. The NeoPixel mirror is made out of the following components. One Raspberry Pi 3B Plus with an SD card, one Raspberry Pi case, one Raspberry Pi camera and camera ribbon cable, two M2 screws, six wood screws, one PCB prototype board with associated wiring, one 3D printed Raspberry Pi camera mount, one 36 inch by 36 inch wooden backboard, 24 NeoPixel LED strips with 24 LEDs each, 576 LED covers 3D printed out of clear PLA, one 3D printed camera lens hood, 16 laser cut mounting grids, four pieces of vinyl planking, one 5 volt 30 amp power supply, and one PC power cord. I began this project in SolidWorks, a computer aided design software package. I first modeled the unique laser cut mounting grids that would hold all of the 3D printed LED covers in place. Like their name suggests, these pieces consist of a piece of wood with square slots that will be cut out using a laser cutter. The spacing of each of these slots was based on the LED spacing of the NeoPixel strands that I bought for this project, which have 30 LEDs per meter. The mirror has three unique mounting grid designs. One designed for the mirror's outer corner, one designed for the remaining border pieces, and one designed for the internal sections, which have a cutout that will allow a 3D printed camera lens hood to slide in between these pieces to keep light from the LEDs from spilling into the camera's field of view and blowing out the image. After I had completely modeled these pieces, I next modeled the LED covers that would mount into each of the slots and diffuse the light generated by each NeoPixel. At this point, I began to create a digital assembly of the mirror using the parts I designed to make sure that everything would fit together correctly. I next modeled the backing board that would hold everything in place, followed by the mirror's picture frame border, and finally inserted digital models of the Raspberry Pi and Raspberry Pi camera, the latter of which I also used to model the 3D printed camera lens hood and camera mount that would hold the camera in place on the backboard. After everything looked correct, I saved the LED covers, camera lens hood, and camera mount as an STL or stereolithography file so that I could 3D print these pieces during the next step, and then also saved each of the mounting grid designs as a DXF or drawing exchange format file so that I could laser cut these designs later. It was now time to 3D print the LED covers, camera lens hood, and camera mount. I began by opening up Cura, a free 3D slicer, and importing each of my models. After verifying that all of my print settings were correct, I sliced each model, which generated G-code instructions that would tell my printer how to print each file. I then saved the G-code instructions onto an SD card, transferred these to my printer, and started the print job. Because the mirror is made up of a 24 by 24 grid of LEDs, I needed to print 576 individual LED covers. In total, this process took nearly 9 straight days of printing and consumed almost 3 full rolls of clear PLA. If you attempt to build this project yourself, be forewarned that both the printing process as well as the support removal process will take a while. Definitely do not attempt this project if you're short on patience or time. While the LED covers printed, I headed to my basement where I'd set up my brand new K40 laser cutter. Like the 3D printer, the laser cutter also runs off of G-Code, which is streamed from a Raspberry Pi that runs the free K40 Whisper laser cutter software from Scorchworks. A link to the software can be found in the video description below. To prepare each of the DXF files for lasing, I opened up each of the files in Inkscape and changed all of the line colors to red in order to let the K40 Whisperer software know that these sections should be cut out. After this, I resaved everything as an SVG or scalable vector graphics file and imported these files into the K40 Whisperer software. It was now time to get ready to cut out all of the mounting grids. A few words of warning. Laser cutters are extremely dangerous, are a tremendous fire hazard, and generate a horrible smell as they're cutting through material. If you've seen William Osmond's safety glasses vs CO2 laser glasses video, you'll know that a laser can do serious damage to your eyes if you don't wear proper eye protection. If you haven't seen the video, be sure to check it out. It's both informative and hilarious. When operating a laser, be sure to always wear proper eye protection, have a fire extinguisher nearby, and properly vent your laser cutter's exhaust. With all of the safety precautions in place, I placed a sheet of 3mm plywood into my laser cutter, adjusted the laser power, and started cutting. The laser cutter's stepper motors now began moving the laser head across the wood, selectively firing to cut out each of the grid squares. After about 3 minutes, the laser had finished cutting out one of the panels, so I removed it from my machine and repeated this process for the remaining 15 mounting grids. 
After this was done, I took all of the panels outside and painted them with a few layers of black spray paint. It was now time to make the LED mirror's backboard, which is made from a 3 foot by 3 foot, half inch thick piece of plywood that I had cut at my local hardware store. I began by marking out the board's center line so that I would know where to drill a hole for the Raspberry Pi camera. I next marked out the locations of holes along the edge of the backboard that I would need to drill in order to feed through all of the NeoPixel power and signal wires. Having a T-square definitely helps, as it will make drawing straight lines and taking accurate measurements over long distances much easier. I next propped the board onto some weights to elevate it off the ground, and then drilled quarter inch holes at each of the locations that I would marked out in the previous step. I next laid out all of the grids on the board to help me align everything correctly, and then marked several key locations on the backboard using a red sharpie. Finally, I used my T-square to draw a straight line through each of the grid rows on the backboard, which would allow me to place the NeoPixel strips into the correct locations during the next step. This step is important because it will make sure that each of the LEDs are located in the middle of each LED cover, which allows the light to shine through each of the covers evenly. It was now time to attach the NeoPixel strips to the backboard. The project uses a total of 576 NeoPixel LEDs to create a 24x24 24 24 grid. I therefore needed to buy four 5 meter rolls of LEDs, each of which contained 150 LEDs per roll. After verifying that the spacing I had marked out earlier was correct, I first cut out a row containing 24 LEDs from the first roll using a pair of scissors. I then peeled off the protective paper to expose the adhesive on the back of the strand, and then carefully pressed it against the backboard. I then repeated this step for each of the remaining 23 rows. The solder pads of the first and last NeoPixel in each roll were covered with heat shrink tubing to act as insulation and provide some strain relief. Because I would need to daisy chain all of these strands together, I removed this tubing by carefully cutting it with an X-Acto knife. It was now time to solder the LEDs. Because there would be a significant voltage drop if all of the LED rows were powered in series, I first connected the 5 volt and ground rail of each row in parallel using a set of jumpers. To make programming easier, I did connect all of the data lines in series, which required me to run the data wire between NeoPixel strands behind the mirror through each of the wiring holes that I had drilled previously. To do this, I used individual wires from a long ribbon cable, since these were both very thin and could be cut to the exact length that I needed them to be. After everything was soldered together, I taped the data wires to the backboard to get rid of any extra slack, and got ready to power up the LEDs for the first time. Because each NeoPixel can theoretically draw 60 milliamps of current at full brightness, I chose to power the mirror using an external 5 volt 30 amp power supply that I had purchased online. I began by cutting the end off a standard power cable, and used wire strippers to expose the wires in each of the individual cables in the cord. I then connected the wires to the power supply screw terminals as shown on screen. If you end up building this project yourself, please ensure that you're connecting the correct wires to the correct screw terminals. I then connected two jumper wires to the ground and 5 volt lines of the power supply's DC output terminals. To verify that everything was wired correctly, I next used a solderless breadboard to connect the LEDs and an Arduino microcontroller together as shown. The Arduino was previously programmed with a test program to light up each of the individual LEDs. To learn more about Arduino programming, please be sure to check out my other projects on the electronics playlist linked below. A link to the Arduino test code that I used can also be found in the video description. It was now time to plug in the power supply to see if everything worked. After inserting the power supply's cord into a surge protector and flicking on the switch, the LED slowly lit up, indicating that everything was programmed correctly. At this point, all of the mirror's parts had finished printing, so I began to glue in all of the LED covers into the mounting grid slots using super glue. To do this, I placed four drops of glue into the corners of each slot, and then gently pressed in each LED cover. This process can take a while, so be sure to work in a well-ventilated area, as the super glue gives off a slight odor that will definitely get to you as you're gluing in all 576 covers. Once all of the covers were glued in place, it was time to attach the assembled grids to the backboard. For this, I used hot glue, as it is both extremely viscous and also sets very quickly. I kept the LEDs on during the gluing process, which allowed me to make sure that everything was aligned correctly. Comparing the bare LEDs to the other LEDs shows that the printed covers did a great job at diffusing the light, making the images on the mirror much easier to see. To make everything look a little bit prettier, I next headed to my garage, where I used a miter saw to cut four pieces of vinyl planking that I would use for the mirror's frame. These pieces were designed to look like stained wood, which saved me an extra paint step during the assembly process. After all of the framing pieces were cut, I attached some wooden squares that I had left over from cutting out the mounting grids to the back of the vinyl planks. These squares served as spacers to make sure that the frame would sit at the correct height. After this, 
I glued the frame to the backboard using a bit of wood glue. The final mechanical assembly step was to attach the Raspberry Pi, camera, and camera lens hood to the backboard. I began by gluing the lens hood into the slot on the front face of the mirror using a bit of super glue. While this dried, I attached a Raspberry Pi camera module to the 3D printed camera mount using two M2 screws. I next flipped the backboard over again and used four wood screws to attach the camera to the backboard so that the lens pointed through the camera hole and lens hood. After this, I attached a Raspberry Pi case that I had bought online directly underneath the camera mount using two more wood screws and then covered these screws with capped on tape to make sure that the screw heads would not accidentally short out the Pi. Once the case was attached, I placed the Raspberry Pi into the case and then added the case's top cover for some additional protection, after which I connected the Pi to the camera using the onboard connector and a Raspberry Pi camera ribbon cable. I next connected jumper wires to the Raspberry Pi board and then used PCB prototyping board to wire everything together as shown on screen. The connections on this board were again covered with a bit of Kapton tape, and the PCB was attached to the backboard using more hot glue. Finally, I used a braided cable sleeve to bundle the power and ground connections coming into the PCB together to keep everything nice and neat, after which I attached these wires to the DC terminals in the power supply to complete the mirror assembly. The final step was to program the Raspberry Pi. For this, I first installed the Raspbian operating system on an SD card and set up the Pi to be accessible via remote desktop. Please check out my Raspberry Pi setup plus Wi-Fi remote desktop access video link below for more details about this process. Once the Pi was up and running and I had connected via remote desktop, I opened up the terminal and typed in sudo raspi-config, which opened up the Raspberry Pi software configuration tool. There, I proceeded to the Raspberry Pi configuration menu and ensured that the camera, SSH, VNC, SPI, I2C, serial, one wire, and remote GPIO options were all enabled. At the time of making this video, the Raspberry Pi's built-in Broadcom sound chip interferes with the NeoPixel library and causes it to work incorrectly. To get around this, I next disabled the sound chip through the console terminal by blacklisting the sound card. To do this, I first created a new file called alsa-blacklist.conf on the desktop and added the line blacklist snd underscore bcm 2835 to it. After this, I again opened up the terminal and entered the command gksudo, which opened up a dialog box prompting me to run a program. With the as user root option selected, I next typed in pcmanfm, which brought up a file browser with special edit permissions of the Raspberry Pi's low-level directories. In this file browser, I navigated to the etc slash modprobe.d folder and copied the configuration file I had just created into it. After this, I deleted the configuration file from my desktop and rebooted the Pi by typing sudo reboot into the terminal, which caused the Raspberry Pi to restart. During my next login, I then noted that an X was present over the volume icon in the Raspberry Pi's taskbar, indicating that the sound card had been successfully disabled. With the sound card disabled, I next returned to the terminal to install the required libraries to control the NeoPixels LEDs from the Raspberry Pi through Python. I did this by typing in the command shown on screen and hitting enter. Finally, I installed the last required software package called Pi Camera, which allows for individual pixels of incoming Raspberry Pi camera images to be accessed and manipulated via Python. To do this, I typed in the command shown on screen, which grabbed the Python 3 version of the software package and installed it on my system. With the install complete, it was finally time to run the NeoPixel Mirror's Python code. A link to this code can be found in the video description below and works as follows. After initializing all of the code's variables and fixing the camera's parameters, the code grabs a grayscale image and then extracts a 24 by 24 pixel region of interest from it. At this point, the image is composed of a red, green, and blue channel, but since the image is grayscale, all of these channels contain the same information. Therefore, the code next grabs one of these channels and reshapes the 24 by 24 pixel array into a 1 by 576 element vector where each element corresponds to a pixel in the mirror's NeoPixel strand. The code then assigns these values to one of the color channels in the NeoPixel array, displays the image which causes the NeoPixels to light up, and then clears the camera buffer to get ready to grab the next image. All of these operations occur in a while loop, which runs indefinitely until the user terminates the script by typing Control c into the Python console. To run the code, I opened up a terminal, navigated to the directory containing the code using the cd command, then typed sudo python3 neopixelmirror.py, which is the name of the script that controls the NeoPixel LED mirror. 
At this point, it was time to place a sticker onto the frame and head to the Great Lakes Science Center in downtown Cleveland for the 2019 Cleveland Maker Fair. There, the mirror ran continuously for nearly 10 hours without any hiccups and delighted everyone that walked past it. In case you're here because you saw the NeoPixel mirror in person at the event, thanks for checking out my channel. If this is your first time here, please consider subscribing to help Super Make Something reach a larger audience. Overall, the event was a huge success, and I now have a digital display piece that I can hang in my office or take to future maker fairs. In addition to showing a live stream of your reflection, the LED mirror can also be used as a digital billboard that can show pictures or other things like animations. Links to the Python code to do all of this can be found in the video description below. A big thank you to everyone who came out to the 2019 Cleveland Maker Fair to see this project in person. If you enjoyed this video and learned something new, please consider giving the video a like, sharing it with your friends, and subscribing to my channel. Also be sure to hit the bell icon to be notified when I upload my latest video. Your support helps Super Make Something reach a larger audience. In case you're interested in building your own NeoPixel mirror, a bill of materials and a list of all the tools that I use can be found in the video description below. Well, that's all there is to this episode. Thanks for watching, now go Super Make Something! Thanks for watching! If you enjoyed this video, please be sure to hit the like button and share it with your friends. Your support helps me make more episodes. Links to all project files can be found in the video description below. Click the subscribe button on the left to keep up with my latest projects, click the cards on the right to check out more episodes, and connect with me on social media. Thanks again for watching, now go super make something!